This Week in IT, Qualcomm unveils new laptop chips with 18 cores and an 80 tops AI engine, promising multi-day battery life and remote device control. Meanwhile, Microsoft unveils free AI chat for Office and that it's opening its co-pilot AI platform to Anthropic's Claude models. So stay tuned for all the latest. <laughs> Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Chaosoft. On Wednesday this week, Qualcomm announced its next generation of ARM chips for Windows laptops in the form of the X2 Elite and the X2 Elite Extreme. And they outline some of the features of these new chips, which they say will be coming to devices only in the second half of next year. So I suspect we're going to have to wait quite a while until we see any notebooks in the shops that actually contain this new hardware. So let's look at the X2 Elite Extreme to start with. Now this is the flagship chip, if you like, and apparently one of the key differentiators of this chip over all the other Qualcomm Snapdragon chips that we've seen in the last year for Windows laptops is that they're borrowing something from the Apple Playbook and only with the Extreme chip, as far as we know at this stage, they're putting the memory and the CPU onto the same die. So that makes a fast overall experience for end users. Now the CPU itself is actually the third generation of this chip because why they announced all of the Snapdragon processors last year for Windows laptops. In the meantime there was also a mobile chip which was the second generation as I understand so this makes this the third generation. One of the biggest complaints about last year's Snapdragon X chips for Windows was the graphics but while they'd done some amazing things with CPU and brought that kind of quite close to some of Apple's M1, 2 chips for the Airbook. The graphics processor, the Adreno graphics that's again from Qualcomm on these chips didn't really live up to expectations and of course that's a big problem for people, especially content creators. And they're claiming with this new version of the GPU in the chips we'll see next year, there are significant performance gains on the graphics. The Hexagon MPU chip, which is designed to take AI tasks away from the GPU and CPU on these devices and perform them with reasonable power expectations, is said to be up to 80 tops, so they're saying that can deliver throughput 78% faster than the MPU in the current Snapdragon X Elite notebook. And they're also interestingly saying that this will be able to perform more complex AI tasks, but more specifically concurrently, just suggesting that you'll be able to perform more than one AI task at the same time, so kind of AI multitasking locally, if you like. They're also saying the X2 Extreme Elite is 75% faster than other CPUs on the market at the same power level, and that it's 31% faster with 43% low, lower power than its predecessors. At the same time, they're announcing that these devices will be able to have Wi-Fi 7 connectivity, 5G modems, and Bluetooth 5.4, and they will also include a new feature called Snapdragon Guardian, which delivers out of band management to administrators so they can remotely locate, uh, lock and wipe devices in the case that the operating system becomes unresponsive. Are these chips going to change the situation for Windows on ARM devices next year? Well, possibly, especially with the increase in graphics performance here, the biggest problem still remains compatibility, especially for enterprise customers. Because if you remember last year, Microsoft released these ARM devices and then released Intel versions of their Surface laptops specifically for business. And we know that that most businesses will prefer to buy the Intel versions just because they know there could be compatibility issues with ARM. So Microsoft decided to push the ARM devices to consumers and the Intel-based Copilot Plus PCs more to enterprises. Is this going to change that? Is this going to change the uptake of these devices? Mm, I don't know. You've still got those compatibility issues. Is this going to be a, a notebook that people can game on? Even with the 
improved GPU? I'm not sure, probably mainly because of compatibility issues. I could be wrong about that. But from what I've heard, these devices are not really suited for that purpose. And of course, consumers are going to be a little bit wary of buying devices if they can't be sure all of the things that they use, whether it's software or hardware peripherals, are going to work. And I don't think this new generation of chip is going to change that necessarily. So you've still got issues like, does my printer connect? Let me know in the comments below what you think about these ARM PCs. Are they going to ever become mainstream? Are they going to ever be adopted by organizations? Do you think that it's worth the trade-off of compatibility for the battery efficiency and some of the other advantages that are only uh, apparent on these ARM devices? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favor to ask you. As we go live today, we're on about 13,520 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 13,600 this week. So if you'd like to see this kind of weekly news roundup from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Another surprise for me this week was that Microsoft is adding Copilot, a free version of Copilot chat to Office applications. So if you don't have or don't want to pay for a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, you will now have access to this free chat in the application. So it's the same deal as you get in the Windows Copilot application or you get in the browser. Microsoft is saying that there will be a sidebar in things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and all the rest of it. And you won't need a Copilot subscription to you know, ask questions, draft documents, analyze spreadsheets, all that kind of thing on the file that is open currently. So the chat is content aware. So that means can see the document that you have open right now. You'll be able to use certain commands, you know, looking for tools, files, and actions. And this free version also apparently includes pages, image generation, multiple file uploads, and pay-as-you-go AI agents if you're using those. So the big difference here between this free AI chat and the full Microsoft 365 Copilot license is that the AI chat is not grounded in your organization's knowledge as a whole. You have to upload any documents specifically if you want it to look at them. It won't be able to go out and search your organization for information. So that's probably the biggest difference between these two systems. So the free Copilot chat is much more limited than the fully licensed version. Sticking on the subject of AI, Microsoft also announced this week that they were adding Anthropic's Claude models, Opus 4.1 model to the paid version of Microsoft 365 Copilot. So it's now becoming a multi-model solution. I think that Microsoft is trying to diversify its options away from OpenAI because there have been some disagreements uh, between those two organizations in the past. And they're saying, well, we're doing this, officially we're doing this because we believe that the Opus model is better at certain things and can give you better results like summarization and and reasoning. So it'll be interesting to see how that works compared to the chat GPT based solution that we have in Copilot at the moment. As it stands, this feature is available in the researcher agent and Copilot studio, but they say this uh, Opus 4.1 model, the experience will be rolling out to other Copilot features in the coming months, and you'll be able to select which model you use via a drop down menu. So I'm looking Looking forward to testing that and to see how it differs from OpenAI's offers. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now where I talk about the Copilot's return on investment, or rather its lack of return on investment, as Microsoft admitted last week. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week. Thank you again to our sponsors at Chaosoft, and I will see you next time.